We saw Zwift last year. I'm here with Steve. What's happened since then? Two main things for me, really. The first one is, is our community's grown, and I mean grown through the summer. So people always talk about indoor cycling as being seasonal, but uh, what we've seen through the summer, uh, we thought we thought it maybe it might decline, but we've actually grown. The second thing is we're here at Tax today. They're one of seven booths we're in. We're seeing a huge surge in development around smart training specifically. What you see behind me here is a new Tax Flux. So really, all the training manufacturers are getting behind Zwift and bringing to life this immersive experience, which enables people to feel the the ups and downs of actually what it's similar to what it's like riding in real life. From a product point of view, stacks of stuff's been going on. After Eurobike last year, we went on to Kona, we looked at structured, structured training, which means workout programs and, and workouts that are either prescribed uh, to you by your coach or you customise yourself or you follow one of the workout programs within Zwift. November we launched as a subscription platform. We've got subscribers now, or the, the communities you like to call them, the communities in 150 countries in peak months riding about 10 million kilometers a month. We've launched courses, uh, a mountain extension. We've launched a Ride London course recently. And I think best of all, my favorite, my favorite feature is uh, group rides. The fact that I can register to be in a group ride, ride my friends from my home. And you know, that's all about essentially delivering on the promise that we've made to take something which was quite a solo and painfully boring experience into something that's really immersive and social. I guess that's kind of the Zwift effect. And uh, that's a kind of a, term that's been coined by the community and I think the reference point for that is people like Matthew Heyman who won Paris Bay this year having fallen off his bike he rode Zwift for five weeks indoors and ended up winning Paris Bay so of course it looks like a video game it kind of is a video game it's fun and that's why people really like Zwift but it's really got the integrity that uh, serious athletes want and wish and require and and I think at the last count I think we've got around 75 World Tour pros using Zwift which is quite amazing. So big news for this year is that Zwift is launching with iOS. I'm here with Mike, he's going to tell me a bit more about that. So Zwift for iOS is super exciting for us because more than anything, it simplifies the Zwift experience. 12 months ago, we were looking at big computers, gaming computers, high-spec graphics computers, TVs, laptops, and plus cables and dongles, and there, there were all sorts of accessories that you needed to connect to the game. Now, with the native Bluetooth, all you need is a phone or an iPad and a compatible piece of hardware, and you're in the game. So basically it's just kind of simplifying the whole Zwift experience. It totally simplifies it. It takes a lot of pieces out of it and it makes it accessible for tons of people who don't have computers and just have iPads and phones. So is it the same kind of fully featured experience that you get with a larger computer system on the iOS? It's The iOS version is exactly the same game. In fact, if you look here, you can see one of our group rides going right now. Um, full drafting, full immersive gaming experience here and this is basically the same Zwift everyone's used to except it's in a phone. So it all looks really good. When's it going to be available to the public? So we'll launch the beta version in about two weeks and then the production version will follow shortly after once we get everything worked out. But the cool thing is it'll all be available at the touch of a fingertip. Cool. Cheers.